Okay, so we're outside here at Coppertown Square, right across the street from the cafe, because uh, PG&E's put out the power and, uh, you know, made difficulties for us. So uh, this is our second show, and the pilot was m more difficult uh, than I could ever imagine. There were a lot of technical difficulties on the day of the show, and there was some computer deficiencies and a lot of time editing and rendering. Good morning, Gold Counties. We're broadcasting live today from the square at Copper Valley in Copperopolis, California. We're Vince and Vicki, and today's show is brought to you by the Creative Community Co-op. So now here's our host, Rich Barrasso. <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys. Hey, hey, Rich Barrasso here, and I want to thank you for joining me on Creative Community's Good Morning Show. We're Gold County's Wake Up Call. So we're here to talk about our community, but first I want to introduce you to a veteran guy, and he's very vigilant about our taxes. Al Sagala, come on up, Al. And so, uh, Al, before we start the show, can we do a pledge allegiance to a flag? Certainly. Let's do that. You follow me? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Okay, you guys, we've got some exciting uh, stuff going on here, and I want to bring on another guest. And this guest uh, and I have a lot in common. She's a broadcaster and a musician. And she's also into real estate. So let's bring her on now. It's, it's Mary Lou. Come on, Mary Lou. Mary Lou Elliott, sit down here, girl. How you doing? What's going on? Oh, nice to be here. Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, you know, and I introduced you as a musician that we, you know, we've played together in bands and stuff. But um, I want to roll through the fact that you also do real estate. And, and where, uh, where at do you do that? In Contra Costa County. Okay, and um, and so what do you do? Re residential, commercial? Well, actually, I have a gas station in Stanislaus that uh, I just sold, and so it's more commercial. Uh, I was a general contractor for a long time, so I know about building large buildings, and I know what goes into it. Uh, my largest project was a $30 million condo development that I built. And so um, that's your day gig and it probably suits you. I, I used to do real estate appraisal because uh, when I had my first kid, Rich, um, his mom said, oh no, you're not going on the road anymore. So I became a real estate appraiser. <laughs> wow. so, um, so that's what happened, but I was still a musician. so. So you play flute and uh, you're rocking flute. If you guys want to go to Google, you could Google rock and flute, right? You can Google rock and flute once or twice. <laughs> and so tell me about that. Uh, I know you, that you play all around. You played uh, with us in the Richie Barron band and some other stuff. What do you got going? Oh, Richie's amazing. Richie Barron, Dr. Tequila. Shout out to Dr. Tequila. Love you. <laughs> Love the Artista group. Uh, right now, since I just bought a house, I'm moving in. My band is in Denver. Jeffrey Marshall, shout out to Jeffrey. Uh, my band member has no arms and no legs. He plays the bass with his feet. His feet are connected to his torso, and it's pretty amazing when he gets out there, he jams like nobody's business. And yeah. his, his name is Jeffrey Marshall. You can, I met Jeff. You met Jeffrey. Yeah. Seven Toes, is, you can Google him on Seven Toes and find him. Yes. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and now, um, 
you know, we both broadcast on the radio, and so we have a common interest there. And you do a lot of what I do as far as bringing new entertainment and uh, music uh, to your listeners. So tell me about your radio experience. That's my first love. Is it really? Oh, gosh. Because the local, it, it, our, our mission statement is to support local artists, right? And, and the same as you do here with your community, and it's... And, uh, well, actually, I do have uh, a, a very deep relationship with Fleetwood Mac um, that started about, what, I was 21. And, uh, and when I was 24, Mick Fleetwood ended up being the best man at our wedding. Uh, my husband, who is now deceased, uh, was his assistant, his oh. personal assistant oh. and manager. And so we did have a lot of time with the band and everyone. And, and it was just, it kept me in, it started me in rock and roll and it kept me there uh, for, for a long time and in a different capacity yeah, so well and that those are the types of stories that you know make you an urban legend because uh, really people know who you are you could you could see your videos on youtube you could hear you on ozcat radio and you could see uh you play the relic you've played uh kessler's um mm -hmm. uh, sweetwater you, music hall i Ashkenash, uh, I, yeah, there's been, <laughs> there's a lot of, them. but I'm not really promoting myself right now as a musician. I mean, I do play my flute every day and, nice. and get a little time. How long have you been playing the flute? Since fourth grade. And so, uh, back then when you picked it up, did you know that you were going to keep it or was it like, oh, my mom wants me to play, you know? She started me at on piano at three mm -hmm. and she's a concert pianist and I just realized that I felt I could never play as well as she did on the piano mommy dearest no, no I'm just kidding sorry <laughs> <laughs> mom I didn't say that no. um, yeah so I changed in instruments and that's what I did I mean I knew I loved music but I just felt like there was another instrument waiting for me out there, and I found it. Well, I, I think it's great. And Mary Lou, you and I are going to keep in touch and make things happen. I know that uh, with all of this stuff going on, you're also a promoter and um, make, making things happen, bringing bands into town and whatnot. Right. So we're going to keep in touch with that and keep promoting the things that we do. And then I got to get Richie Barron to come up to uh, Calaveras County. And you, come on, Dr. Tequila, you yeah. can do it. Yeah, and then you, you could come and play with us on that. And uh, we'll have to work up some tunes with me and you, too. Oh, that would be great. So I really appreciate you coming uh, up to Calaveras County and uh, joining our show. And, you know, uh, we're, we're going to see you out there again. Thanks so much. Thank you, Rich. All right. Okay, that was Mary Lou from OzCat Radio in Vallejo, Benicia area. She's a fellow DJ and musician, and I'm glad she made it here to Copperopolis. So right now, we're outside here at the Coppertown Square, and um, I'm taping a few segments because uh, the first show that was our pilot show, it, it made it so we could do more shows, but it was, uh, there was a lot of difficulties in this show. And we had uh, problems with editing and uh, my computer guy had to do some adjustments on the computer and all. So we finally got it done and the pilot show is on our YouTube channel. I hope you've seen it. If not, you could go back and see it. Uh, otherwise, uh, that was the pilot show, and that's with a live audience. I couldn't gather a live audience this time uh, for the October show. So the October show is going to be a compilation of clips that we have in our bucket. Uh, basically, I went out and did some news clips, and we're starting to promote and, and have uh, a news reporting 
uh, arm here so I could go out and do stories uh, that are community oriented, basically nonpartisan uh, issues that we have here in the county that everyone needs to know about. And so, um, so you know what, let's go on the road. We're going to go on the road with CECOM News and visit the New Maloney's Dam Reservoir to see if it'll flood us out someday. Let's go check it out. I'm Rich Verasso. I got invited in New Maloney's Dam to inspect the spillway that was far out of mind a couple years ago when the lake was bone dry. The old dam, one of the first on the Stanislaus River, stood approximately 200 feet and mainly serviced downstream agriculture. A power plant was an afterthought and you can see how antiquated this old site is. This old dam runoff led to Lake Tulloch and was reputed to be the best rafting ever. No one wanted it, but it was a necessity for our developing society. The new dam, completed around 1979, is 625 feet high, made out of a massive pile of chipped serpentine chromite. This dam holds two million acre feet of pure snow water from the Sierras. All the new water behind the dam spills down to a huge modern day electro hydro plant with generators three stories high. They push power out to this big voltage inverter grid and that gets pushed into the high voltage lines that go to your town. The dam supplies the water to push the generators and the whir is heard on the microphone. Just take a listen. Okay, so here we are at New Maloney's uh, Reservoir and this is the dam right here, uh, right in front of us. And you can see the old PG&E uh, plant. Uh, and I'm here with Dennis Mills. And what are we doing here, Dennis? Well, actually, what we're looking at is, is that all of the serpentine that was taken from the spillway, which you'll later see, was then brought over here and crushed to create the dam itself. And this was, uh, is actually the, uh, operated by the Bureau of Reclamation, this particular facility. And it's capable because there's two Francis turbines there that requires a certain amount of water as, as a pushback to keep those turbines functional. That's why Lake Tulloch is required to be at certain levels at certain times of the year, because if it gets dropped too low, then this can't generate power. I see. And Calaveras County gets 25% of all of the power that are, that's generated here, along with Tuolumne County. And so it's basically a very cheap power source for government buildings, uh, uh, schools and hospitals. Or our homes, right? No, our homes are not included. This oh, is okay. this government power. It was under an arrangement that was when New Maloney's was put together that the, the two counties would share equally with the first 25% of all power produced. So that tells me that the other electricity for our homes is saved for us. That's PG&E. Because this is being used for the government. That's correct. Okay. At a very, very cheap rate. And this is an earthen dam. It's different. It's it is an earthen dam, uh, and it was originally constructed or uh, considered for construction back in 1947. And back at that time, the idea of a power generation facility wasn't even considered. That came later, and that's why the Francis turbines were installed later in, in a redesign of the dam facility itself. And a dam like Hoover is a cement dam. It's a cement dam, so, exactly. And, and, and Orville is just like this. No, it's not. No? No, it's a concrete dam. Okay. And it had, it's, co it's a combination of concrete and earth. And is this the second biggest dam in the state? This is the third biggest dam, okay. and the last large reservoir to be built in the western states. Okay. So obviously important to our uh, regional area. Yes, it is. The Stanislaw River itself and all of the drainages have very little few homes on it. The result is, is the water that comes into New Maloney's is some of the cleanest water in California. Oh, that's great. So. And so now, why are we here today? Uh, our primary concern is because of the uh, failure of the uh, spillway at Oroville with the overtopping and all of the subsequent damage, and remember Marysville was evacuated, or right. there's a lot of problems surrounding that, 
I wanted to ensure the residents of Calaveras County, and especially those who live in the area of Tulloch, even down in Oakdale and the Riverbank and Tracy, that this dam is, is a different type of operation. It's a federally operated dam. It's designed totally different than Oroville, and its capacity is totally different. It is not one of those dams that rises and falls very quickly. There's a lot of storage here, a lot of storage capacity. Their goal is to keep it at about 2 million acre feet, keep the 400,000 foot acre foot buffer in there, but at the same time, as you know, we had twice the amount of rainfall this last spring as we would normally have in right. snowpack. And they were able to control it and keep the outflows under the 8,000 cubic feet per second that flows through the Goodwin Dam area down below and keep the entire channel intact and no damage to homes. So it's literally saved billions of dollars in potential damage into the valley as well as providing irrigation as, as the flood control component works. You're telling me there's a little bit of math and science behind that. Absolutely there is. <laughs> and uh, I noticed that you have uh, some of the fellows here. Who are, who's here with you? We had the, uh, our assistant administrator, which is Brian Moss. Uh, we had uh, John, who is our OES coordinator. Uh, I asked uh, somebody from Murphy Sanitary District to be here. Uh, the head of the Gemma and Meteorological uh, for the state of California as a geologist was here to inspect the spillway and to look at the dam face itself and to, to ensure that there is no issues. Uh, we had just a number of interested parties that were willing to come and, and look at this whole situation and get a better understanding, including one of the captains from Copperopolis Fire, uh, who now understands better in an emergency, how would we respond to a fire in this area? How would we respond to an emergency evacuation in this area? Right. Those are things that hadn't been really considered before. So getting their boots on the ground and actually physically seeing it I think it gives them a better perspective of how they respond to emergency situations. And you had the big cheese from the Central Valley uh, District of the Bureau, Bureau Reclamation. Of Reclamation. Drew, Drew Lazar, yes. the Bureau of Reclamation out of Folsom, is the one that set this up. And we had Matt Reed with Congressman McClintock's office here uh, to kind of help facilitate and be sure that we got our questions answered. And so there's a lot of awareness of this facility and what could happen if there's a problem. Right. And and they do put together uh, inundation maps and dam failure studies and they're doing those on a regular basis to ensure that there is no potential there. If there was, then they would be putting things in place to ensure that the safety of this particular dam remains intact. Now behind here is a lot of water. Let me tell you. Two million acres. Two million acre feet of water behind this dam and I think we're all going to go down uh, the road and check out the spillway so let's let's go check it out all right thank you we took the trip down to the spillway seeing the lake above Lake Tulloch wow what a massive pile of chip rock and earthen dam on the Stanislaus River built by the Army Corps of Engineers and managed by the Bureau of Reclamation under the Central Valley Improvement Act. This dam, holding pure snow water from the upper Sierras, replaced the older dam that mainly serviced agriculture. Today, we're here to compare our facility to the situation in Oroville and how that translates to Copperopolis and Lake Tulloch. Driving the dirt and gravel road on the forbidden side of the lake gives you a special feeling like not many folks get to be here. You get a glimpse of just how massive the whole lake is when it's in all its splendor. Looking at the lake almost empty during the drought gives you an idea of how much water really is stored here. This is absolutely for the safety of the community. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Are you rolling? Yeah. It's a bedrock. Bedrock spillway is what it is. Hey, so Dennis, we're down here in the spillway now after being up there, and uh, you can see that this is where all that water is going to be coming down. Tell us about that. Well, this isn't the same situation as Oroville, where it's a concrete spillway. This, as you can see, is basically hard rock mined. So these are this is a very stable area. You can see it's a very sh uh, shallow slope to it. So there's no rushing of water. Uh, this will fall in, and, and uh, the Army Corps has done a great job in putting this together to ensure the safety of the community, especially Copperopolis that's below this, right to be sure that uh, we're not going to have a problem with Lake Tulloch. 
So and, and then uh, I heard that they, when they were digging this out, they actually used this dirt for the dam. Correct, because and, of stability of the of the soils, the rocks that are here, it made great fill for the dam itself. And I can't really see these uh, solid walls eroding quickly. Uh, so it would probably handle an emergency flow. And even the, if you can see the floor of this is solid as well. It's not concrete, it's not going to destabilize or, or fall apart. So everything that's here uh, will contribute to keeping itself together in an emergency. And then once, once a, a, a catastrophe, say a bunch of water comes down, then it, it will flow over it flows this into side. this. Is, this is Bean Gulch right here. Oh, okay. And this will flow Go back. Ahead. You can see Bean Gulch. Back to the base of the dam where the water comes out. So this will rejoin the river well, well before you get to Copperopolis. Okay. And there could be some water flow into Lake Tulloch. Absolutely. Yeah. But it'll follow its way to Goodwin. It will follow its way to Goodwin, and Goodwin is limited to 8,000 CFS uh, in that area. Uh, just it's designed for that. Uh, but no more than that. So once we get above that point, then we're going to start having problems in Oakdale and Riverbank with those houses that are down in the low ground, as well as in Tracy, which would be affected as, uh, as part of it, an inundation. And I would expect that that water would spread out flat. And that is the did. whole point. Slow it down, which is what this does. It slows it down, gives it an opportunity to kind of gently flow it rather than this rushing water that you saw at Oroville with a very steep drop. Right. So. Okay, well that's great. Uh, well, let's go back up to the top. Okay. So making it back up to the dam, I felt we were safer with our spillway design as opposed to the concrete one in Oroville. I saw the massive design functions supplied by the composition of the rock. They were sure to hold fast during an earthquake and an exit plan for the overspill had a managed approach. So this is 2019. Let's check back in 10 years and see what's up then. This is Rich Ferrasso for CECOM News in Copperopolis. Well, that was a run up the country, and we went to see New Maloney's Reservoir and to see if it was safe for us. And I think that it's built pretty good, so that was a happy clip from CECOM News here in Copperopolis. Uh, so now uh, let's go into San Francisco and visit a fellow musician and full-time residence of Calaveras County right here. Huge rock star lives right here in our county. And when he isn't on the road with a band, and he plays with a few of them, Jefferson Starship, Lydia Pence, uh, he plays with Johnny Gunn, Royal Dogs. Um, it's drummer Donnie Baldwin. Let's go check him out. All right, here we are at the Haight-Ashbury Street Fair. We're backstage right now, and I've got drummer Donnie Baldwin. Donnie, what's going on? How you doing, Richie? Not bad. I'm so excited. It's, it's great. Well, you know, today's a great look at the weather here in San Francisco. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful day. It's like going back to town. Yeah, and you got double duty today? I do. Quicksilver and JS, Jefferson Starship. And so, uh, is Quicksilver going out on the road? You know, it's kind of like the embryonic stage. You know, we hear that uh, there's some booking agencies that are really interested in David Singh. It's called David Freiburg's Quicksilver Messenger Service. Right. So yeah, I think I think probably maybe at the end of the year, definitely probably in 2017. And Starship's keeping busy. I saw that you were gone for a while. Yeah, I left the band in '90 and uh, came back in '04, '05, the end of '04. But in in that time, in that retirement time, I, I was still playing. I do a lot of Lydia Pence and Cold Blood, and I did Garcia for almost three years until he passed. Yeah. Um, did Eddie, Eddie Money for a right, while, right. and just kind of took a, a little bit of a break, just kind of hung out and uh, watched my girls grow up, and, yeah, you know. Yeah, spend time with the kids sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I was, I've been on the road since 71, I right out of, right out of high school, so, I, so I, I was doing this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I taught, uh, we... Bam uh, here talked to Pete Sears. He says that your timing is impeccable. Wow. And so you guys have a tight rhythm section. Tell me more about the new Starship now. 
I don't know if it's it's new. It's kind of a, I mean, from what I was doing in the 80s with the band, it's, I mean, it's organic in a whole different way. There is no bass player. Chris Smith, who's a, a wonderful keyboard player, uh, also plays bass. So he has a bass keyboard and a, and a regular electric keyboard. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's nothing like a bass guitar. And back in the days when, when Pete was in the band and I was in the band playing, it was amazing because Pete's just an amazing player. So it was always like this this lock that we had with everything else around it going nuts. Yeah. Um, and with Chris and the new band, it's, uh, I mean, you'll see today, it's just, it, it works. Right um, on. And then where does, uh, I heard Prairie's going to be around. Prairie's, yeah, yeah. You got a lot of surprises coming down here today, but one was Prairie. What's going on with that? Prairie just got, uh, well, we did rehearsal yesterday. You know, I, I love Prairie. I love his playing, and we, we always have a great time together. He's been doing Todd Rundgren. I think he just got back. I think he was out for about four or five weeks. Prairie always, he's always busy. You know, he's got his art thing that he does. And, right. And, uh, it's always good to see him, man. We love just hanging out and uh, you know, playing together, man. It works. You know, with two drummers, sometimes it's kind of like you can get in each other's way. And, right, and right. We don't even get close to that. It's just. It's uh, like a diverse dynamics. That yeah, you guys I have. think we might just both. I don't know if I'm going to get divorced and we'll just get a house together. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to catch Prairie. Donnie and I are going to talk to Prairie and some other people. So hang tough and uh, let's hang out backstage a little bit. All right, man. All right, right on. Peace. Okay, so we're back here in Copperopolis, and I wanted to share a clip from right here on, at Town uh, Square in our September concert series. We feature a bunch of different bands, and the first band that we did on the big stage right here was the Columbia College Big Band. <laughs> We're going to do a, another Big Band era song. This one's another classic. It's called Sing, Sing, Sing. And we're going to feature on the jungle drums, Copperopolis' own star Big Band drummer, Jack Cox. Jack's the one that, that uh, helped to arrange to get the Columbia Big Band out here tonight. So thanks, Jack. Thanks for doing it.
Jones. Thank you, dancers. It's a diverse offering that we, we do here, and everyone uh, in the crowd has something to listen to at one point or another. Country is big around this place. So we have a local country artist from here in Copperopolis, and his name is Nick Tyrell. He came out to play a gig for us and pounded out a two-hour set of originals and classic hits. An amazing star, Nick Tyrell. Let's go talk to him right now in Copperopolis at, at our town square. Right hey, here. so we're at Copper Town Square here with Nick Tyrell. We just had a great set. Uh, that was great, Nick. Thank you so much. Yeah, I had a blast here. This is my second time playing in Town Square, and it was a blast, and I'm really looking forward to next next season. Well, next season we're going to drag you out here with a band. Yeah, and I think that would add a lot, but we, we did good acoustic too, but that would add a lot of energy. But we had a blast tonight. A lot of people showed up, which is what you want. And You have a lot of fans, and they really enjoyed it, and they, they were just kicking back and having a good time. Look, they're not even leaving right now, so that's, that's great. But the, the thing is, is that you can catch your music on YouTube, YouTube. Tell me about it. Yeah, on YouTube and also on Spotify, iTunes, uh, Pandora, all the all the music platforms, and YouTube also. And it's Nick Tyrell, T Y R R E L, and it's on all all music platforms available. All right. Well, that's a great way to find out. Uh, if you weren't here to hear his music, you could check it out that way. But we have to catch him next year. So I appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, and I really look forward to it. Thank you guys so much. Too. All right. We'll see you out there. You came a long way from that Mississippi scene, girl Waiting on your break, yeah, I know what you mean, girl Okay, so we're back now, and these are free concerts. <clears throat> so the concerts here were a big success. Hundreds of people come. They set their chairs up on the lawn. Kids are running around going crazy. Everyone's eating tri-tip sandwiches and drinking. It was a big success, and all of our friends from Lake Tulloch were here, along with some folks from out of town. People come from out of town, and they come and visit us all the time. So uh, we're going to continue doing entertainment here. As you can see, I have my uh, band for the day here in his full costume. So while we're out on the square, I want to drop into another community booth right here. It's uh, pertinent information that we all need. And these people are a gas. I want you to meet uh, our friends, our local friends from the CERT group. C-E-R-T is Community Emergency Response Team. And uh, I want you to check these guys out. So, so let's go check them out. You know, I always wanted to meet Smokey Bear when I was a kid. There was always some intrigue with fire. So let's find out over here what we got going. This right here is the CERT stand, and it's for emergency preparedness, and I want to talk to these guys about that. Hey, you guys, how you doing? Uh, Rich Ferrasso here with CECOM News, and I'm here at your booth, and uh, it's about Community Emergency Response Team. Team is a great work, uh, word because that means community to me. And so uh, this is about what? Preparedness? Yes, but nothing's ever going to happen. I don't really need to be prepared, do I? You need to be prepared, Rich. You, you really do. As soon as a disaster happens, you're not going to have any time to go gather things. You need to be prepared before an emergency happens. And that's what we're here for, to help you get prepared. And do you have a list or any information on how I, as a regular guy, would go home and be prepared? Yes, we do. We have a, a list right up here that will t explain to you what you need and why you need this. Because in the event of a disaster, you will not have time to go and look for these things. You can have them ready, just any any old bag. You need a gold bag for clothing. You need a pair of shoes. Uh, uh, just what you would, a change of clothes in a bag. Medicines. It, and medicines. Medicines are important. 
Very because important. nobody's going to have any, right? That's right. And also, I want you to see the kids' bag here. You have to also make it fun for them because it's probably going to be a miserable time. So I see how you've made this a little bit fun, and they have their things that they always are comfortable with. So, uh, and I love the Smokey Bear. You know, Smokey the Bear was always big in my day, and I guess he's still around, right? That's correct. Yes, yes he, he is. is. Yes, he is. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, when you see th this booth at events around town, you should come up here and you could sign in and get on their email. And there's a certain app also that there is for uh, notifying people. And so, they'll, this right here, if we can't reach you, we can't alert you. And fire travels fast. I know my sister lost her house in paradise. So I'm first hand on that. And uh, there's other disasters too that could always happen. It could be wind or massive amounts of rain. Or maybe there's no PG&E because don't forget, now PG&E might be turning you off if there's a problem. So you have to really be ready for that by having a lot of flashlights and stuff. And I bet you that this list right here helps you get ready for that, right? Yes, it does. And it also lets you know that PG&E has t already told us during the brownouts they cannot shut the lights off in one section. They have to, a whole county will be shut off and they will not guarantee that it will go on the next day. It takes several hours for them to go through every wire to make sure that there isn't any problems before they turn the, the electricity back on. And so this is a time for you to be prepared with a million candles, maybe uh, some sterno fluids for your cooking or however you, uh, you know, cook uh, at your camp stove will come in handy. And these, but yeah, be safe. Be safe. You don't want to do propane or any of that in the house because you'll have carbon dioxide and that's very poisonous. So you need to get educated and we're here to do that. And you folks, you're all from around here, right? Yes, we are. And we were also uh, advised by PG&E that if we have freezers full of meat and our refrigerators, we need to get a generator to at least plug those things in during this event. We have, some people have cattle, their, their pumps run, their water pumps run on electricity. So they need to have a generator for their pump in order to keep their livestock. So I have a generator, but I know that it's not proper to plug the generator into your house system or you'll feed the electricity back through the lines. And these poor guys out there trying to make it better for us could get electrocuted. So there's safety uh, situations on that. PG&E recommends that you get an electrician to wire your uh, generator to your house or get the proper cords to be able to plug into your freezer and refrigerator. Now, now that's a C10 electrician, not you, Sparky, okay? So uh, this is great. You know, you guys are doing a great service for us, and I want you all to know that you should definitely look up CERT. If you don't know them, find out, because they're our friends, and they're going to help you when something's going wrong. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And this is Rich Ferrasso, CECOM News, right here in Copperopolis. The CERT group, okay. So that was CECOM News. That's what I want to do is run around here and make news stories about uh, the things that are going on, issues that maybe we need to know about, things that I hear at the coffee clutch at the cafe. Uh, most Monday mornings we have a little clutch here and talk about uh, issues and whatnot, and then we we contact public officials and they even come down and talk to us. Dennis Mills, our supervisor, has been here. So it's real cool. So this comes from you by the Creative Community Co-op. That's the new nonprofit Chamber of Commerce from here in Copperopolis. And we have a 501c6, which is a tax exempt number for Chamber of Commerces. So uh, besides fostering business and commerce, part of our endeavor is community communication and education. So we'll be reporting on nonpartisan political issues, county initiatives, we'll talk to community leaders, and try to dispel some of the misconnections 
misconceptions about uh, issues going on and, uh, you know, stuff developed by a widely split partisan view. We need to be in the middle, folks, and that's what I'm trying to do is get some information for that. The Creative Community Co-op has already gathered a large support group, and we have a very intelligent board of directors and major sponsorship donations, including uh, angel donations uh, that come down and grant us a lot of equipment and stuff so we could do these shows. The old chamber doesn't have a chance, but we'll always be there to help. So right now, watch out for our events like the Cammies. You know, I came from the Bammies in the Bay Area, so I want to do the Cammies. That's the Calaveras Arts and Music Awards. And we already have a date, January 11th in 2020, at the Metropolitan in San Andreas. And uh, more relevant right now is something really important to talk about. And that is this right here, the Mark Twain Wild West Fest. That's coming up on October 19th. And it's a sensational free event in the whole of Angels Camp. They shut the road down and it's an enactment of period time. And so uh, as I have a crystal ball here with little skulls on it because of the word Calaveras, I look in here and I find out that there's a lot of great events coming up. But off, off this crystal ball, I could tell you right now that the Mark Twain Fest, which is October 19th, is going to be one of the best events here. You have to tell your friends from out of town to come up because it's free. And really, you could get here in a couple hours from the Bay Area. It took me two hours to get back and forth from Fremont until I finally got smart and moved here. Uh, so anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, thanks for the show. And basically, I want to, uh, uh, you know, tell you that we're going to be out there with our cameras. We're going to be at the Mark Twain Fest, uh, Wild West Fest, with our cameras doing news stories there. And we're going to be all around for Halloween. There's going to be a great Halloween um, activities here at the square. And uh, so with that being said, I have one more guest to introduce and then uh, the day. So... Uh, let me introduce our next guest right now. <laughs> My next guest is the spirit from Halloween. After the Mark Twain Wild West Fest on the 19th comes a very important holiday, Halloween. And right now I've got Mr. Ghoul here is my guest and he's gonna help me say that anyone can contribute to this show, as you could tell. Uh, if you have any ideas or any thoughts about uh, what to be on this show or who I should interview, get in touch with me. My email is very simple, richard at verasso.com. My last name spelled V like Victor, A-R-R-A-S-S-O. Richard at verasso.com is my email. So email me and tell me how, what you think of the show. What do you think I should do better? Uh, this is a community show, so it's really up to you to give me input. Otherwise, you'll just see me tromping around doing whatever I want. So, uh, yeah, anyone can contribute. The other thing I want to say is that tune into my internet radio show, and that is at copperopolis.rocks. There's no dot .com, it's just copperopolis.rocks. It'll get you right to my radio show, the world-famous show, Famous Hits Live, out of San Francisco, which I now broadcast right here from my warehouse in Copperopolis. That's copperopolis.rocks. It's an internet radio, and I play all the bands that don't have major record deals from California. Very interesting and stuff. So uh, that's our show for tonight. And uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what's going on. You could also leave comments here on uh, Or otherwise, you might catch it on public TV. Catch me on email, richard at verasso.rocks. This is the Creative Community Co-op, and uh, this is Good Morning 
Gold County, my morning show. Thanks so much. Okay, it's Rich Ferrasso here, and I wanted to mention the credits for the people that helped me out here. First of all, it's uh, Tarang Patil, who is my uh, video producer and editor and confidant on computer work and stuff like that. Been a friend of mine from Fremont for a long time. Came up here and actually lived with me for about three weeks while we set all this stuff up. So I really thank him, uh, Tarang Patil. The next one is John Mork, alias Captain Cow. He's my audio engineer, and he, he, me and him run a lot of PAs for bands. He helped me with all the audio gear for this production. And then my radio producer on Copperopolis.rocks and FamousHitsLive.com is Saul Vigil. Saul's been with me for a long time. He produces all my radio segments and drops in the music and whatnot on copperopolis.rocks. Then uh, Dennis Constantine is a national radio programmer. Uh, you probably don't know his name, but he used to program in this area, KMEL Radio, when it was the Camel Rock and Roll and a lot of stations around the nation, but without him, I wouldn't be so well connected to the radio broadcast industry. And um, then we've got uh, our, uh, one of the angels uh, that helped make this happen is my buddy, Dennis Sanfilippo. I wanna shout out to him and thanks for all your help. Uh, our musical contributors is uh, Vince and Vicky. Um, as you noticed, uh, they're on the show sometimes when, when the ghost man isn't. And uh, we've got the sponsorship from the ladies at the Lake Tulloch Quilters Guild. Um, they provide the quilts when we're doing live shows. You'll notice the backdrops are all handmade quilts. And uh, of course, Copper Valley, without Copper Valley Properties, we wouldn't have a place to do this show. They've been uh, so nice in allowing uh, a lot of liberties for television and recording here. So shout out to Copper Valley. And uh, now my new um, consultants in the internet web business and social media are experts out of uh, actually Dallas, Texas, but they have roots here in Copperopolis and that's Clear Cut Media. Clear Cut Media, without you guys, uh, we wouldn't have a future. You're the, you're the future of all social media. I love you guys. <laughs> singer with the band. We've got a few singers up here in the band. Here's our lead trombone player, Dan Ray. Dan is a uh, lifelong resident of the town of Columbia, which is where we're from, supposedly. Um, we're from Columbia College. 
and he's going to sing for you. This is a uh, romantic song. It's from 1938. It was written by the great Cab Calloway. And Dan's a, a true romantic at heart. And he always he always sings this to his true love, his first love, Minnie the Moocher, the Red Hot Hoochie Coocher. Dan Ritter. <laughs> the band, band members right now and I want them to stand up. Stand up Alan 
and Gage stay up. They're brand new. They just joined the band when school started two weeks ago. And then stand up Aaron. Who else we got? Oh, we got Dominic back here. Dominic. These are these are uh, full-time college students all taking music classes at Columbia College. So that's, that's our uh, part of our music department. The rest of the people are, uh, we have, we're missing a couple of students tonight. We, we, the rest of them are community members, people that learned to play band instruments when they were kids, and they never stopped. And the rest of you stand up right now. All of you, all of you. And this is, yeah, we got Jeff back there on percussion and Sam on the trumpet. We got our retired music teacher, Ron Quintinall here on the trumpet with the black hat on there. Trombone, stand up. Another new guy just joined the band, came from Knight's Ferry. Uh, he took the ferry all the way here. <laughs> and you met Dan Ray, our singer, and Bruce Judices from Calveras County. Then on the clarinet is Len Otley. He's a Brit. Uh, next to him, a former Columbia College student, he's finishing his music degree at Sac State, is Marcus Jensen, the tenor. On the flute and tenor sax is David Rhodes. And our uh, lead sax player tonight, Gordon Geet from Angels Camp. Music teacher from Soulsbyville Elementary School in Tuolumne County, Kyle Dooley. And then we've got a couple of farmers on the end. Uh, the man on the baritone sax is, is Steve Foyata. And next to him is his wife, the farmer's wife, Sue Foyata. They're, they're nut farmers. And then uh, our already met our great drummer, Jack Cox, from Copperopolis. Our bass player, also from Calvary County, Jeffrey Lund. We're going to feature tonight sometime on the xylophone over here, Jeff Chadwick. And I told you about Dominic Restivo. He plays guitar. He's also going to be featured on harmonica in a little bit. And I'm Rod Harris, and we're from Columbia College, sort of. Um, so we meet at Columbia College every, every Wednesday night, and we play big band music just like this. We're going to do a classic right now. This is probably the number one hit song of the big band era. And it was the number one, it was written in, and published in 1939, and it was the number one song of 1940. It was a hit song by the Glenn Miller Band, and if you want to dance, uh, this is a good song for that. It's called In the Mood.